for this year. And uh, it's about probabilistic systems and experimentation. And my name is Yngwie Lamo. I'm working at uh, the, the organizer, the virtual organizer for this, this uh, workshop in the Western Norway University of Applied Sciences. And um, uh, the first talk in the session will be on interval probabilistic time graph transformation systems. And it will be given by Sven Schneider. And his co author is Maria Maximova and Holger Giese. Please, Sven. Thank you very much for the introduction. <clears throat> so, um, in this talk, I will talk about interval probabilistic time graph transformation systems. And we will use or introduce these interval probabilistic time graph transformations to model systems. Especially, we are interested in probabilistic real-time systems that we want to model uh, using interval probabilistic time graph transformation systems. And then we are interested in analyzing such systems with respect to probabilistic real-time properties. Why are we interested in that? Because there are many examples of such probabilistic real-time systems, such as gossiping protocols, or we'll consider a small, a small example in this talk, but also scheduling algorithms where processes execute tasks at real-time that could also fail but also in self-adaptive systems where also components can fail and things have to be repaired in real time. But of course, also coordination protocols and automotive or train systems. These are all just examples where these probabilistic real-time effects can be very, very important. So basically, uh, we, we want to have a suitable modeling formalism for all these uh, kinds of systems. So we consider three aspects relevant here. So we consider structure dynamics, timing behavior, and probabilistic behavior. So there are a lot of existing formalisms, such as graph transformation systems that feature structure dynamics, but not timing behavior and probabilistic behavior. For these, um, for these other aspects, there are other formalisms, such as timed automata, that feature timing behavior based on uh, clocks, clock resets, clock invariants, and clock guards. And there are probabilistic automata, for example, that feature probabilistic behavior. Uh, besides these very basic formalisms, there are also combined formalisms such as timed graph transformation systems that combine graph transformation systems with uh, timed automata using clocks, clock guards, etc. And there are also probabilistic graph transformation systems that combine graph transformation systems with probabilistic automata, thereby then featuring structure dynamics as well as probabilistic behavior. Also, uh, there are combinations of um, uh, automata models such, that, such as probabilistic timed automata here, where uh, timed automata are combined with probabilistic automata, then also featuring timing behavior as well as probabilistic behavior. And then in the past, um, there was also already a in, uh, formalism introduced called probabilistic timed graph transformation system that featured then all these three different aspects. So it was based on uh, graph transformation systems for, for structure dynamics, but also timed automata using clocks and probabilistic automata for stating a probabilistic choice. So, uh, but what we can then observe as a first step is that all these uh, formalisms in this green area, in this green circle, uh, 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 yeah, represent non-deterministic structure dynamics, as we all know, in graph transformation systems. So there can be two paths that start in the same state that reach very different graphs. So there's non-determinism there. And also for this timing behavior, there's also these, these formalisms there in this red circle, all also contain formalisms that are non-deterministic with, with respect to this timing behavior because they are all based on clocks, clock guards, clock uh, invariants, and uh, clock resets. So because these clocks thereby define usually a lower bound and upper bound between which an event or an, a step can take place. So intuitively, uh, this non-determinism results in the fact that there can be two different paths that start in the same state, but they reach a certain common graph at a varying um, time or at, at a varying global time. So there is this kind of non-determinism involved here, but um, uh, there is a problem here uh, because uh, these probabilistic formalisms down here in this blue circle, they are all deterministic probabilistic um, modeling formalisms. So there this probabilism is always deterministic. So this is the case for all these four different formalisms. So this is kind of an imbalance between these three different aspects. And we are now looking for, for uh, or modeling also non-deterministic probabilistic behavior. But when we switch to non-deterministic probabilistic behavior, we see that all these four modeling formalisms in this blue area now go away. And uh, basically the idea of non-deterministic probabilistic behavior is that there can be two different paths starting the same state that reach a common graph, but that uh, the probability that with which that graph is reached 
is depending on how this non-determinism is resolved. So of course, I will talk later in this uh, talk why uh, we, we need non-determinist cobbler's behavior for the systems that we consider. But basically, there is already a, a modeling formalism based on automata. This is called interval probabilistic time automata, or that, that, that allows to uh, combine non-deterministic probabilistic behavior with non-deterministic timing behavior. So that is already an existing formalism. And what we are aiming for is to extending this, this basic formalism based on automata with structure dynamics to obtain one uh, formalism that features all these three different aspects in their non-deterministic fashion. So that's basically our goal to have this interval probability time graph transformation system formalism that, that has all these three characteristics, these three aspects in their non-deterministic form. So um, I will just now give a very small example on an interval probability time graph transformation system and how we model, uh, for example, uh, here in this case, a message transmission protocol, which can be understood as a gossiping, very, very small gossiping protocol where just two agents are involved. So here we have one agent A1 that is supposed to transport messages to agent A2 via one via channel here E1. And we can assume that this channel is a lossy channel where uh, messages can be lost on the way. Um, there are two messages initially attached to this first agent, and these two messages are then to be transported to agent A2 uh, during the execution of the system. Also, agent A1 has a clock C with which it can measure uh, the duration uh, until the next message is to be sent. Um, based, on this clock, based on this clock, um, we, we are using an invariant here to state uh, that uh, as long as this agent A1 with, a, with that clock, so this matching also that clock identifies that first agent, that as long as that agent has a message attached, so not, to, not both messages have been transmitted, that as long as this is the case, that this clock value cannot exceed the value of four. So we thereby, with this nested graph condition here, provide an upper bound on how much time can pass until uh, the system has to perform some discrete step. Then we are using uh, IPTGT rules to model how the system evolves over, over these discrete steps. So such the, this transmission rule has two sub parts, for one for success and one for failure. So in this case, these, uh, they, they share a common left-hand side, which is now currently depicted. So as a, uh, what, what is matched first, what we match is that there is a message that is still at agent A1, and that is to be sent to agent A2. And these two, in these two, two cases, we do something differently. So for a successful transmission, we detach that message from uh, that first agent and reattach it to this second agent. And for the failure, failing transmission, what we do is we detach it from this first agent and add a lost self loop to that, uh, that message that was supposed to be sent. That's basically the, the structure dynamics part on how we change uh, that, that graph. Then what we have is this timing behavior where this um, IPTGT rule uh, expresses that the, the clock of that agent A1 has to be at least two. So together with this invariant, we have a lower and an upper bound of two and four time units until the next message is to be transmitted. And so that uh, this, uh, this measuring of time restarts after the first message is sent. Then in both cases, this clock is reset to zero. So whichever case happens, a successful transmission or the failing transmission, this clock is reset then. Uh, for the third aspect, so this uh, probabilistic behavior, we also equip uh, both of these subcases, these, uh, these uh, underlying rules, with a probability interval. So this probability interval here for this successful transmission states that the, the message is transmitted successfully with a with probability of 70 to 80 percent. And for the failure uh, case, uh, we state that the probability of uh, the failure case is 20 to 30 percent. Um, and uh, that is basically this IPDGT rule. And what we then have also in our interval probabilistic time graph transformation is this atomic proposition here called one loss. This one loss atomic proposition is used to label uh, states that are reached by this interval probabilistic time graph transformation system and it labels those states where both messages have been transmitted and where exactly one of them has been successfully transmitted and the other one has been lost in transmission. So that's basically the, this example and how um, this formalism can be used to model a system. Uh, what's not in this uh, example is we didn't use attributes here and we didn't use priorities. 
um, but they are supported by this uh, modeling formalism, also by our analysis approach later on. Um, so uh, now we already see that here these probability intervals are used, and that's what I want to discuss now. So we distinguish between deterministic and non-deterministic probabilism. So first for deterministic probabilism as used for uh, use in probabilistic and graph transformation systems, but also in probabilistic automata or probabilistic timed automata, uh, that makes sense for certain applications. For example, it makes sense when we know the exact probabilities. So for example, when these probabilistic values are uh, derived from a random number generator, then we know those exact probabilities and we, there is no, no variation in these, uh, these probabilities that are then to be used. And that is um, especially important for, for example, randomized algorithms that do that, that determine random numbers to make local decisions. Um, but then there are also non-deterministic uh, there's non-deterministic probabilism uh, that we want to use in, in IPT GTS, and that's important because, for example, there can be unknown um, probabilities, like for for the example that we considered, because assuming that this uh, channel is a lossy channel, maybe using a wireless communication, then we don't really know the probability with which such a message would be successfully transmitted. That uh, that success can depend on the distance between those two agents or on, on uh, interferences from other uh, sources, but it can also be dynamically changing over time. So it can be that those two agents have a battery and that battery energy drops and, uh, and then they can't communicate that well anymore. So the, the probability for a non-successful transmission de decreases over time, but also that hardware errors can, their, their likelihood over time increases, of course. So there are many different reasons why such a probability would not be constant but should be then estimated or bound by, by a lower and an upper bound um, in, in, these, in these systems. So there is a uh, physical effect, uh, especially when there's a physical effect uh, on these probabilities, then using probability intervals makes sense. So especially, uh, as I just said, for, for failures on demand in cyber physical systems, where well, we can only provide lower and upper bound for, for um, certain cases that are happening probabilistically. Um, so based on this uh, modeling uh, approach, what, what we want to do is we want to analyze such interval probabilistic time graph transformation systems. And we have especially this, this question here, determine the probability to reach a set of states within a time bound T. So um, what we first can realize is that this set of states would then be described by atomic propositions. And but what we then also need to realize is that this non-determinism that is now in these three different aspects in our model is very important here. And that is uh, is resolved by adversaries, so-called adversaries, that decide uh, on how to the uh, how to uh, resolve that non-determinism. And for any such resolution, any such adversary, um, analysis would yield some certain probability. So that probability that we would obtain depends on uh, on that adversary or how non-determinism is resolved. So um, essentially, what we then get is that there that we can look for an adversary that results in the lowest possible probability and an adversary that results in the largest possible probability. So this P min and this P max operator ask for the smallest probability or the largest probability so that eventually within time bound T, a state labeled with this atomic proposition AP would be reached. So that's basically this analysis problem that we want to tackle to obtain these, this lower bound uh, and this, this upper bound. So, um, how do we tackle this analysis problem for interval probabilistic time graph transformation systems? We first translate our interval probabilistic time graph transformation system into this interval probabilistic time automaton, and then we translate that into a probabilistic time automaton that can then be uh, model checked using the prism model checker with respect to these, these two kinds of uh, properties that we have up here on this minimal and maximal probability to reach uh, a state within time bound T. So these, these uh, translation steps here are implemented in our tool autograph. And uh, we'll now talk a little bit more about those first two steps. So coming back to the, the example uh, interval probabilistic time graph transformation system that we have seen before, we now want to, uh, I want to explain now a little bit the steps that lead to this resulting interval probabilistic time automaton. So back there, we had these two messages that should be transmitted. So initially, uh, no transmission had failed and no transmission was successful. And here on the left, we have like one failure and zero successes. And here we have two failures and zero successes. And here we have uh, zero uh, failures and one success, zero uh, failures and two successes. And here in the middle, we have that case where 
one message was um, not successfully transmitted and the other one was successfully transmitted. So basically our first step is that we consider those um, two graph transformation rules that are in this one uh, transmit rule of our interval property kind of graph transformation system. And using these two graph transformation rules, we generate a structural state space. That's the first step. The next step, what we do is we label all graphs in that state space with the atomic propositions that we have selected before. So only this single graph here would be labeled with this uh, one, loss probable, uh, one loss atomic proposition. That would be the only set that would be labeled. And then what we do is we, for the, for the timing uh, aspect, we add uh, the clock invariance to those states. So for these three states where at least one message is to be transmitted still, the clock invariant would be C less than four. And for those uh, three uh, states down here where both messages have left agent one, uh, there, there is no um, clock invariant still there. So that, that doesn't restrict clock uh, values anymore. Then uh, for each of those three uh, applications of that um, IPDGT rule, uh, we, we add that clock guard that is given by that, um, uh, by that rule to these uh, steps here. And then we also add those clock resets from that um, IPDGT rule to this resulting automaton here. And also these uh, probability intervals that were also given in this interval probability time graph transformation rule that we have seen before. So these are just these simple steps on how to um, derive this interval probability time automaton. Things are, are of course a little bit more difficult when we have pro priorities or um, um, yeah, more 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 uh, more rules. But uh, for this simple example that we considered before, these are just the basic steps to derive that resulting this induced interval probability time automaton. <clears throat> just a little word on uh, on how to analyze. Uh, such an interval probability time automaton with respect to these properties that we have seen before. So the minimal probability to reach this one loss state here from this initial state is zero when the time bound is four, because this uh, timing non-determinism can be resolved by some adversary so that the, the system has to wait here in this initial state for four time units. And then whether it's here or there, the, the adversary can still delay the next step by four further time units. So within four time units, we can't reach this state actually by this uh, probability minimizing adversary. But for a uh, probability maximizing adversary, that is possible because that one would uh, perform these two transmission steps as early as possible. So after zero time units, we would either be here or here. And then after two, uh, no, after two time units, we would be here or here. And then after two further time units, we would be here or there or there. So there is a chance for, for the timing part that we reach this state for the probabilistic part. Uh, this is a little bit more difficult to, to analyze now, but what we basically can see is that there are two paths, that one and that one leading to this state. So we have two paths, each consisting of two steps. So how do we compute that? We resolve that non-determinism now backwards from that final state. So we first maximize the probability from this interval, so we get 0 0.8, and we maximize the probability from this interval, that's 0 0.3. Uh, and then we go backwards again, and we have to continue with this uh, 0 0.8 side because it's larger than 0 0.3 to, to maximize the overall resulting probability. So from this interval, we take this 0 0.3. And then since this here is uh, the same probabilistic step, then we can only choose 0 0.7 here anymore because 0 0.8 plus 0 0.3 would be more than one. So the, the res resulting probability here would be 0 0.45. And for the uh, minimal probability to reach that state here within eight time units, that would then be a very or a much smaller probability. So we can see here already that we can have these probability intervals um, for interval probability time automata also just because of this uh, this probabilistic non-determinism. So um, back to this analysis approach. Now we have our interval probability time automaton, but what we actually want to do is we want to carry out our analysis based on uh, the resulting probabilistic time automaton. So we want to translate that uh, interval probabilistic time automaton into a PTA. But what we can observe for that step is that only a finite number of adversaries is actually relevant for analyzing these two, two properties. And uh, having this finite number of adversaries that can also be determined. So what these local decisions then would be for these adversaries, we can replace uh, these edges of this interval probability time automaton that have these probability intervals, we, we can replace these steps, uh, these edges with PTA edges where exact probabilities are used. 
And the idea is that all possible local decisions of such relevant adversaries then end up being uh, suitable or required PTA edges uh, and the probabilities therein. So we can just translate this interval probability time automaton into a resulting equivalent PTA that uh, results in the same uh, same results regarding those two uh, those two questions when they are then analyzed for that resulting uh, PTA. So basically. Um, then, with this uh, finally determined PTA, we perform this model checking with the prism. But of course, uh, when uh, when we do model checking, there there are problems, of course, because the state spaces could be too large or even infinite, and then model checking becomes uh, infeasible. So, uh, what we have there are two approaches. So, one we presented earlier this year um, that was uh, developed for uh, probabilistic time graph transformation systems, but can also be used for interval probabilistic time graph transformation systems. It's a compositional analysis technique where the state space is basically decomposed into uh, smaller chunks that then can be uh, analyzed and model checked in isolation. And the other approach that we have is that during this translation or construction process of this interval probabilistic time automaton, we don't need actually to generate the entire structural state space uh, in the first step, but we can interleave that with adding uh, the timing constraints and then checking whether states that are in this, uh, that are structurally reachable, whether they are also uh, reachable when also considering the, the timing constraints. So that can also rule out certain uh, states already beforehand. Um, and that can also help to, to obtain very small state spaces, even when the structural state space would be infinite. So these are just two, two first uh, attempts to also tackle bigger, uh, bigger state spaces in, in this for the for the model checking. For so to sum up, uh, we introduced interval probabilistic time graph transformation systems, and um, we introduced them to be able to model probabilistic real time systems, especially then cyber physical systems, where it's important that we don't just only have structural dynamics that's non-deterministic and non-deterministic timing behavior, but also non-deterministic probabilistic behavior, where this non-deterministic probabilistic behavior is very important because uh, the, the uncertainty, and there can, there can be uncertainty or variation of probabilities uh, for, for steps that are affected by physical effects that then possibly are not explicitly modeled in that uh, graph transformation system. So, and then what we proposed was an analysis technique for, for these interval probabilistic time graph transformation systems with respect to probabilistic time reachability properties. And uh, for that, is, uh, the basic idea was that we end up with a probabilistic time automaton and use then Prism as a model checker for that. Um, what we want to do in the future is, so now we have a modeling formalism that is um, non-deterministic in all these three aspects, but uh, sometimes that is also not really helpful because it's too abstract. So maybe what we want to do is uh, refine uh, this uh, timing behavior and probabilistic behavior to explain a little bit more in detail uh, how uh, the, the, the durations of steps or the uh, delays between steps and how uh, different probabilities are the result of what's actually going on. So we, we want to model these physical effects maybe a little bit more detailed. And another line of research that we envision is that we possibly want to consider also metric temporal graph logic uh, and the properties thereof to, to also analyze these, these kinds of properties. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much.